Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch, also California Weather Watch. And tonight, I'd just like to do a quick video here on how strong was that wind. Wind speed's a tricky thing sometimes. It can be very difficult to estimate the gusts that are occurring and can fool even the most seasoned weather watchers and official weather observation personnel. And we'll look into some of that here in a bit. Let's just go ahead and dive into things here because I'll start showing you some wind speeds. If we take a look here, this is gale force wind. Clock's in at 39 miles per hour. We start wind advisor here, uh, you know, for the National Weather Service, we'll kick it up here for a wind advisory at 46 miles per hour. But once you get about 58 miles per hour, you're talking about severe wind and you get a high wind watch and those warnings start to get issued when you're expecting 58 mile per hour plus gusts. And you can see the inauguration day storm for SeaTac checked in at 64 miles per hour there. And there's some interesting things with wind speed here. So if you go from 30 miles per hour, which is not a bad gust here, especially if you're in the land of tall trees here in the Pacific Northwest, or along a lot of the west coast here. And if you go to 43, you're doubling the force of that wind. And if you go from 30 to 60 miles per hour, you are quadrupling the force. So a pretty stout wind there at 30 miles per hour. And you think, okay, maybe you just double at 60 miles per hour. What's the big deal about a 60 mile per hour gust? But it kind of shows that here. You're quadrupling that force, pretty intense. And 100 miles per hour is over two and a half times stronger than that 60 mile per hour gust there. And an incredible 10 times stronger than a 31 mile per hour gust. So you can kind of see why when you're dealing with these huge winds, just why they can be so destructive. Also, a 28 mile per hour gust is twice as strong as a 20 mile per hour gust. And again, I mentioned the 43 versus 30. And of course, I mentioned these ones down here too as well. Kind of gives you some perspective on just how much force is being exerted by strong winds. Now, taking a look here, this is peak wind and weather observations. You start to record that in the official observations when it hits 30 miles per hour. Gale force winds are 39 miles per hour. As I mentioned, the inauguration day strong clocked in at 64 for SeaTac. The Hanukkah Eve storm was the highest gust ever re officially recorded at SeaTac of 69 miles per hour here. There were some uh, earlier in the early 50s that were over 70, but a little bit different anemometer setup. But officially on the ASOS, that's the highest gust ever recorded at SeaTac. The South Valley surprise in 2002, Eugene, Oregon, 70 miles per hour, impressive wind there. Columbus Day Storm, Renton, 100 miles per hour. Portland, Oregon, Columbus Day Storm, 116. That's when the anemometer failed. Sea Lion Cave, Oregon, December 1995, 119 miles per hour. And of course, the king of all gusts here across Pacific Northwest, Cape Blanco, Oregon, Columbus Day Storm, 179 miles per hour. Impressive gust. Now, this is the Beaufort scale. You may have heard of this here, but it's kind of a cool little tool here. And if you look at the wind speed miles per hour, it gives a good idea of the wind effect on land. You can see calm when you're less than one mile per hour, obviously, right? And then you can see once you start getting about 19 miles per hour, you can see small trees begin to sway. Once you get 25, large branches are in motion. Whistling is heard in overhead wires. I've seen 25 to 30 mile per hour winds take down weakened trees before. Once you get 32 to 38, again, you can see some difficulty experience walking walking into the wind, whole trees are in motion. Once you hit gale force winds, twigs and small branches can break from trees. Cars can actually be veered on the road. And once you get 47 miles per hour, you can actually start to reach some light structural damage. And that's when we go wind advisory with the National Weather Service. But once you get towards 55 plus, you're talking about serious wind there. And you're talking about a description of storm or violent storm here, widespread damage to structures and vegetations and above 73 miles per hour at the bottom, considerable and widespread damage to structures and vegetation, vegetation and violence. That is a hurricane force gust. Now, remember that with the hurricane force gusts, because we're going to go through category one, two, three, four, and five hurricanes coming up here. Once you get to category four and five, things can get just downright ridiculous. The wind speeds are catastrophic and they can create all kinds of crazy damage. And sometimes it's pretty difficult to comprehend just what kind of damage those type of storms can do. At the top here, you can see tropical storm is 39 to 73 miles per hour. But if we look here, uh, again, 74 miles per hour, hurricane force wind, 105 miles per hour is twice the strength of a 74 mile per hour wind. 130 is three times. 150 is four times the strength of a hurricane forest gust. So you can imagine why the damage is so catastrophic. And that typhoon Bolivin out over the Western Pacific is now an extra tropical cyclone, 180 miles per hour. That is six times stronger than a hurricane gust. So impressive stuff there. Now looking at a few more things here, you can see we've got Crown Point, Columbia River Gorge at an impressive 115 miles per hour on the Washington, Oregon border. 
And uh, some estimates I've seen the strongest dust devils on the planet can get up towards 85, 86 miles per hour or something. But that would be what an EF1 tornado also is here. Now remember that. Hurricane Katrina, you can see 175. Hurricane Andrew at 165 decimated portions of Florida. EF5 tornado is indicated at 200 miles per hour. And again, Typhoon Bolivin there at 180. Look at Hurricane Patricia, 2015, 215 miles per hour. And the Moore in El Reno, Oklahoma. I think these are two of the only tornadoes that were ever Doppler recorded over 300 miles per hour. And look at this, the Moore, Oklahoma EF5 was 12 times stronger than an EF1 tornado. And over 2.3 times as strong as a standard EF5 tornado, which is capable of incredible damage. You can also see I included Mount Washington there as well. Pretty high elevation spot to get some pretty intense winds. But this is the EF scale, Enhanced Fujita scale. And you can see generally 85 or less is an EF0, 86 or more to 110, 111 to 135 is an EF2. We have gotten tornadoes that strength here in the Pacific Northwest. EF3, I don't think we've ever recorded an actual EF3. There have been F3 tornadoes, but since the Enhanced Fujita scale came online, I don't think we've had one of those across Pacific Northwest. EF4 and EF5 are considered violent. You can just get wild, incredible damage. You're talking about scouring cement off of roadways, the wind itself can dig trenches in the ground up to two feet. It will demolish, you know, well-built homes. I mean, it can, it can take cars and vehicles and they're literally never found, you know, just completely ripped apart and goes without saying what would happen to humans in this in these kind of conditions here. And for out of respect to the dead, I'm not going to go into any details here. I do know about what tornadoes can do to people, but out of respect, we're not going to talk about that here. If you're really into that kind of thing, you can look it up on yourself. But yeah, you can imagine when you see EF5 damage, you're looking at well-built structures, just slabbed and, you know, again, ground scouring, roads stripped away and just all kinds of incredible damage. Large semi-trucks with their frames twisted and wrapped around trees and just all kinds of wild stuff. And you're talking about like huge... Um, trains and cars can be lifted off the tracks and actually rolled and thrown through the air. So yeah, all kinds of wild stuff can happen when you get up towards the EF5 category. And this, wrapping it up with this, the more Oklahoma 1999 tornado of 302 would be almost 17 times stronger than a hurricane force wind. So you could just see why the damage would be so incredible with that kind of wind speed there. But anyway, hope that you got, that kind of gives you a little relative idea of what we're dealing with when, with wind speeds. And of course, here in the Pacific Northwest, we have that force multiplier of when you have big trees, 200 foot pine trees here that have been damaged by insects or drought, or they've been sitting there. Um, untested all summer and uh, they start getting big winds in them. They start shedding their big branches here. And, you know, it doesn't take that much wind to really cause some issues in the Pacific Northwest or up and down the West Coast here also. So yeah, kind of keep that in the back of your mind that when you're dealing with a 60 mile per hour gust versus a 30, it's four times as strong. A 43 is twice as strong as a 30. So when you're like, oh, what's the big deal? It was only, it's only 43 versus 30. Yeah, it's twice as strong. So anyway, hope you, you know, just a fun little video here. Just said I do this and kind of explain things and go over the EF and the Saffir Simpson scale and the Beaufort scale there and some winds that we've got here across Pacific Northwest and some of the biggest winds ever on the planet. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. I'll do my briefings tomorrow as per normal and I will talk to you guys then.